Hi guys, I'm Jim and this is Jim's Fix-It Shop and tonight we're going to talk about putting a solenoid on your snapper and get rid of this button that's probably about wore out. Uh, Josh from New York got a hold of me and his actually started smoking. Well, these contacts in here, because you're using DC current, it burns them up. They don't last forever. And then the same with a the solenoid. They're not going to last forever. But here is the one I bought. I got this one from Lowe's and it was $12.98. There's some part numbers if you want to get this exact one. The ignition switch I picked up is also from Lowe's. It was $9.98 and you should be able to see a part number on that. Now to hook this up, it's, it's very simple, but before you tear your machine apart and start putting a solenoid on, unless this thing is smoking like Josh's is, uh, you want to check this. Even though this has 12 volts in it, it, well this one definitely will not start your machine because it has no amperage. This was a $50 tractor battery. They have $14 tractor batteries, which is these two over here. They lasted two, maybe three years, because it only has 150 cold cranking amps. When you buy a battery, that's what you want to look for. You want to get a high number on your cold cranking amps, especially if you're going to use this thing in the winter for snow plowing or snow blowing. Now this one, this one is not maintenance free. That's why I like these. You can actually pop these covers off and put water in them. Now to check this battery, you don't use a meter. A meter is going to tell you voltage. You use a battery tester. This will actually tell you if your battery is any good. I bought this one at CarQuest. They have been bought out by Advanced Auto. And uh, if you don't have one of these and you don't want to buy one, just go down to any automotive store that sells batteries and they'll test it for you. They have these hanging on the shelf. Um, you'll want to charge this thing for like 24 hours. I just have a small, cheap little battery charger I got for a Christmas present 20 some years ago. You want to put it on 12 volts, 2 amps. This has a 2 amp, 10 amp, and a 50 amp jump start. 2 amps. Charge it slow. It's better for the battery. Now you hook this thing up. I don't know if you're going to be able to see this dial very good. We'll hook it up to the battery. I'm going to try to see it backwards in the camera. I've got about 12 and a half volts. Got an awful reflection. Now there's a switch on the bottom. And what this switch does is there's a large coil in here. That's why they have vent holes in it. That coil is going to put a load on this battery just like your starter would. And it's going to get hot. You turn this on for about 10 seconds. You look at your battery. This has 300 cold cranking amps. There's a scale right here that goes from 200 to 1,000. You find the range that your battery is in. And we're still at a good 12 volts, a little over. Now when I hit the switch, you want that to stay in the green. If it gets in the yellow, it's a little weak. If it hits the red, it's junk. Well, let's see what happens. Get the glare off it. 
We're in the red already, and it's dropping fast. You can hear this thing getting hot. So this battery is junk. So before you tear your snapper apart and do a bunch of work to it, get your battery checked. Because I hate to see you do all this work and have to buy a battery too. Now I made a list or a diagram of how you wire this particular switch. If you're going to do this, I'll take a picture of this and email it to you so you'll have it. The switch has five contacts on the back. The starter solenoid, <clears throat> they don't give you nuts for the studs. They don't give you bolts to bolt it on with because they assume you're going to be replacing your burnt out one not this stupid switch. So you're going to have to drill a couple holes and bolt this to the frame. Now this particular one, I checked it for the meter, when you bolt it to the frame of your tractor, it does not connect the ground. That's why this one has two lugs on it. comes with this little wire. It has two lugs. One's hot, one's ground. doesn't matter which is which. They tell you on this particular solenoid to put this wire they furnish on one of these lugs and put it on the hot side of the solenoid. That's coming from the battery. This ignition switch isn't set up like that. You will put this on one of the lugs. You will put this eye on the bolt that you bolt it to the ground with you're going to send 12 volts back to this lug, not a ground. You can do it either way, but this switch is set up for sending voltage back to this. Uh, might as well finish talking about this. This is a small little, I would say, 16 gauge wire. The wire that you're going to come from your battery to this lug and from this lug to your starter is not going to be a 16 gauge wire. You hit that starter, you're going to melt this baby in a heartbeat. The wires that you're going to want to use are going to be at least a number 10. These are probably even bigger. These could be an 8. I don't know. I'd have to mic them. The ends are crushed on. Now, I don't have the pliers to do this because I didn't want to spend $150 for it. Uh, it takes special pliers to crush them ends on because they're heavier duty than the eyelets and forks that you buy like these that you crush on a wire. I just go down to my electrical store, which is all face. I tell them, hey, I need a 12 inch wire and an 18 inch wire. And would you put the ends on for me? They'll crush them on there. They always do for me. It's not a big deal. Um, that takes care of this. Your ignition switch. It has a bunch of letters around the outside. On this one here, it's got a G. That's the ground. You're going to want to run... If you have a headlight on your machine like I do... You're going to want to run five wires up to your ignition switch. Excuse me, four wires from your ignition switch. Then you'll run one wire from your switch to your headlight. That way when you turn on your switch, your headlight will come on for you. You won't have to mess with it. Okay, let's start with this bottom one. You got... Two here, two here, and one on the bottom in the center. That one goes to your kill wire on your machine. That will short out your coil and kill your engine. The next one over here has got a B on it. That's going to come a hot wire 
right from your battery and hook to that one. Next one down around the circle is got an N on it. I don't know why that's, I guess that's your, that's your kill wire that goes to your um, coil for your engine. You got your ground, you got your hot wire, you got your kill wire. The one next one around the circle over here is goes to your solenoid. That's going to run when you turn this spring-loaded part of your switch. That's going to send 12 volts back to the solenoid. And all this thing is is a heavy-duty switch. And it's going to send power to your starter. Then the next one around in the circle, it's got an L on it. That's for your light. If you don't have one, don't worry about it. Um, I would take four wires, probably number 12, and stretch them out and tape them together about every six inches so it's easier to shove through your tube. And crimp on these little female plugs. If I can get this one off, it's just got a female connector up inside of this insulated head. You do want to buy insulated ones because these are really close together and you don't want them to touch. You can buy these. I get them at Menards. They're like 50 cents a piece if they're that much. You can buy a wiring harness for this. It's all the wires that just plug right on of here. It's one big plug. But the wire is like two foot long. It's not long enough to work. You'd have to splice onto it. And that harness is probably, I've seen it a couple times for either nine or twelve dollars. I never bought one. Never have yet. I just make up my own. But this is really simple to put on. Josh in New York, it's 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 not that hard. I'm sure you can do it. If you can't, you email me and I'll help you through it. If you have any questions or comments on this video, put them in that little box below or send me an email and I will help you through this. And I guess that's about it. There's, there's nothing really to it. So if you, I guess, what else can I say? Send me an email if you need some help. Otherwise, we'll see you soon.